Student pilots after their first landing. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning and piss excellence. Dude, I love this, I love this meme. And you know what? It's not just student pilots. Even commercial pilots do this. I mean, not just after any normal landing, but after an amazing landing or you do something really good, this is what you feel like. Everyone in the 7-4 crew really loved the last aviation memes video that I did. And since then, on Instagram, I've been getting a lot of new ones sent to me. So, aviation memes, numero dos, coming up. Hey 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. Today I'm here in Charleston, South Carolina. And normally I would show a video of my hotel room like I've been doing in some of the past videos, but right now my room looks out onto a pool with a bunch of college girls running around in bikinis and I'm not sure what the laws are, but besides that being super creepy filming them, I'm pretty sure I would somehow go to jail for that. I just got out of jail and I ain't going back. Yes, I ain't going back. So we'll imagine this is my view, Charleston, South Carolina. All right, let's get into these aviation memes. Sit down, we're not at the gate yet. All right, this would be me 100% if I was a flight attendant. I I've seen people do this where we're taxiing in and they jump up and they're like in the middle of the plane, jump up and start getting their bag down. And I'm thinking, where, where do you think you're going right now? All the people that are ahead of you still have to get off the plane. ACARS, free text, chemical trails, mind control, population control, mass sterilization. All right, so this is what our computer system looked like. And, and ACARS is basically a way for us to send text messages uh, back and forth to our company, uh, the airline that you're working for. Obviously, there is no chemtrail option in our planes since we don't spit out chemtrails, despite what a lot of people want to believe. But uh, a, chem a chemtrail, just so you know, is a conspiracy that a lot of people have. When you see the white lines, those vapors that are coming off of the, of the back of the engines when a plane's flying, depending on their altitude and temperatures and things like that, you'll get actually a, a, white, a white trail that's coming out of the back of the engines. Now, I'm not going to explain in this video what causes those, but there are conspiracy people who think those are chemicals that we are spraying all over the place. And the one thing I can tell you is I was joking with a friend of mine about this, uh, new pilots that, you know, 10, 15 years ago when we were making $20,000 a year, I was saying, you know, a guy who's making $20,000 a year, if he could make 100000 by telling the truth that he's spraying chemicals out the back, he would have absolutely did it because there was pilots during that time 10, 15 years ago that were having a hard time having money to eat. So uh, anyways, this is a little joke about that, chemtrails, it's not a real thing. Flight attendant, y'all want something to eat? Me, what's my choices? Flight attendant, yes or no? <laughs> yeah, this again would be me if I was a flight attendant. I honestly don't know how they deal with people because there's a lot of times that I'm sitting next to someone and I'm in civilian clothes. People don't know that I'm a pilot and the attitude that they give to some of these flight attendants, I think, man, you're a saint. I don't know how you would tolerate something like that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this would be me if I was a flight attendant, 100%. When your girlfriend says, we need to talk. <laughs> so this is actually the most liked one from my last video, uh, the original aviation memes that I did. Someone said, will you do this one? And this guy actually sent me this meme, uh, Master Caution, Push to Reset. So there's basically something that we have in the flight deck, uh, a Master Caution uh, or a Master Warning, depending on the systems that could be malfunctioning. Anyway, so this is just a joke based off of that. And you know, that's just kind of a red flag and it means this is not gonna be a good conversation. Freight pilots be like, and then they said they were tired when they lost an hour last night. <laughs> so, I mean, this is kind of a joke because a lot of times freight pilots will do backside of the clock flying. And that means we're flying with the night or we're taking off at night uh, and you're flying around a lot at night and you might have a 10 or 12 hour time difference depending on where you're taking off from and where you're landing to. There's been some times where I've done some 14, 15 hour flights and if timing doesn't work out, you'll take off at the start of night and you'll fly with night the whole time. And, and that's a hard time to fly. If you're tired and flying at night, it is does not help things. So this is kind of a joke like this because sometimes freight pilots are just pounding coffee to stay awake while they're flying. Getting selfies with 7-4 gear. Yeah, I wish it was like this. 
Uh, someone sent me this, I don't remember who, but someone sent me this in, uh, yeah, I've had people, I'm sure, take photos of me, and I've seen actually photos of a plane that I'm actually flying. Uh, I've never had three girls run up to me to try to take selfies with me, maybe one day, but it's definitely not today. Hearing people talk about aviation in public and trying not to correct them on everything they say. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty true. Actually, a good story about this. Uh, about a month ago, I was flying on American and I was thinking it was going LA to Seattle or something like that. The girl that I'm sitting next to on this plane says, Yeah, the flight down here, I flew down on a much bigger jet. It was a 747. And, and I was thinking, okay, American doesn't have 747s? Do I want to get in this conversation with her? I was like, oh yeah, I'm sure it was a big plane, but probably not a 747. She's like insisting now. She's like, uh, no, it was a 747. So I go, I mean, I'm a 747 pilot? American doesn't have 747s? Did it have a second floor on it? And she's like, no. I was like, okay, maybe it was a triple seven? That maybe just a possibility? It had like two two aisles? And she's like, yeah, was, yeah, maybe triple seven. She goes, I thought every every big plane was a 747. I mean, I, I felt kind of bad, and I, and I really hope she doesn't ever watch this video. She was actually a really sweet girl, but uh, that's just an example. I just, I could, I could not say something about it. I'm a flight instructor. Would you ever fly commercially? <laughs> so, I don't know if this is what it means, but this is what I'm taking it as. Uh, a lot of times people will say, do you ever fly, will you ever fly commercially? And no matter what you're doing, it's kind of like their little jab. And I get people that say that to me sometimes. They're like, oh, you're flying freight? I mean, would you ever fly a commercial airline? Like, what? I'm flying a 747. That's not good enough. And when I was flying regional jets, a lot of times people would get on and, I mean, this is like a 70-seater jet. People would get on and say like, oh, this thing is tiny. You know? And I'm thinking, man, I was so excited to get to this thing. So... There's a lot of times people make these jabs about this, like, would you ever be a commercial pilot? Like, yeah, I'm an airline transport pilot. I, I don't understand why people want to make these jabs, but that's a struggle you make as you go through your career. It seems like no matter what you do, it's never good enough. And even now I'm a 747 pilot, I still get jabs from people like, oh, so you uh, you can't fly passengers? Is, is that your deal? But I fly both. I fly cargo and passengers and the biggest plane that Boeing makes. I mean, come on, bro. When your instructor asks if you have visual with traffic on downwind. All right, so this is, you're not gonna believe this. I remember when I started flight school and they would say, oh, traffic here, traffic there. I would have thought in my mind, finding another plane in the sky would be so easy. But there's a lot of times where you're scanning the sky trying to figure out and find the plane. And I have pretty good vision. And I'd be looking around like, where are they? Four miles away? How can I not find a plane? So, I, I mean, I know it seems unbelievable. I honestly couldn't believe it. And now I'm still surprised. And, and every now and again, I'll still hear air traffic control say something like, oh, traffic opposite direction, you know, 15, 15 miles. And you're thinking, 15 miles away? You want me to find another plane? I'm not that good. Can't get jet lag if you're always on men rest. <laughs> All right, so men rest, so you know, is the minimum amount of time that you're allowed to have rest between flights. And so obviously we'll have some times where we'll fly 14 or 15 hours and have a 10 hour break and then go fly another 12, 13, 14 hour flight. And it's not really that bad, honestly, because when you get to the hotel, you're tired, so you'll take a shower, you'll, you'll go to sleep, even if it's in the middle of the day, hypothetically. You'll go to sleep and by the time you wake up, eat something, it's time to go work again, you're kind of rested. And on those long flights, you'll have a rest break because there will be multiple crews. So it's a little bit easier, even if you are a little bit tired, you know, hey, you know, in three or four hours, I'll get a, you know, a two or three hour nap. But uh, yeah, this is true. You don't have jet lag if you're on min rest, but I hate doing min rest layovers. When you're about to clear a pilot for takeoff, but they keep and remind you that they're holding short. <laughs> well, now I'm not going to do it. I actually wonder this sometimes, and if you're air traffic control, comment below, let me know that you do if you do this or not. If the pilots are holding short of the runway and we key up and say something like, oh, ready to go, one eight right, does that irritate you? Does that make you think like, okay, no, I'm not gonna do it now? I sometimes, we're always a little bit hesitant to, to make that call, but every now and again when we're rolling and there's no traffic and we don't see anybody, I'll say like, uh, we'll be ready to go approaching the runway and sometimes I think you guys have forgotten about us and we're just sitting there and you know three or four minutes go by and there's nobody taking off or landing I'm thinking this guy's up there eating his lunch or 
texting his girlfriend or something. What are they doing? So uh, comment below if you're air traffic control and you're watching this, comment below. Let me know if this is actually something that you guys do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. If you look out to the right side of your aircraft, you'll notice flight 195 challenging us to a race. I've turned the fasten your seat belt sign back on because is about to get real. I don't know who wrote this. It's horrible English, but yeah, it's true. I've never raced because we get given a set speed that we're supposed to fly at, and it looks like these guys are flying over the ocean. So you're given a set speed, and and in some cases you can modify it a little bit, but it is fun when you're flying out over the ocean or you're flying out somewhere and everyone's kind of in a group pattern and you can see the other planes around you and obviously you're passing them. It is kind of a cool feeling watching you, you know, you're going maybe uh, Mach 8.5 across the ocean and they're doing 7.8. Uh, I was flying behind the Southwest the other day uh, coming Hawaii to LA and we were doing 8.6 and they were doing Mach 7.8 which is basically a, a speed, a percentage of the speed of sound. So Mach 8.4 or Mach 8.5 is just based off of that speed of sound. So uh, Southwest had taken off a ways before us and across the, we were across from the Pacific, obviously, and we caught up to them before we got into, I don't know, LA or Oakland or wherever they were going. Uh, and we caught up to them and actually got in and landed before them and we were thinking like, yeah, what does that matter? I mean, a couple minutes difference doesn't make any difference, but it's just something that's true. 747 me 787 this beam gets used for like everything but uh, yeah I'm sure the there's always a little bit of jealousy from other pilots I, I was sitting next to a 737 guy uh, riding a van into uh, Miami one day and the guy that was sitting next to me was a 737 captain at American and he knew who I flew for and we were talking about uh, the 747 and he was saying to me man if, if I could just have like a week to fly that thing, man, I would just love to fly it. It's just kind of one of those iconic planes that every generation, especially I think kind of the older generation, it's that iconic plane that they really want to fly. So uh, I don't take it for granted when I'm flying that thing. We pull up and you see three or four people. If you go to like an unusual airport, you'll see three or four rampers standing to the side taking photos and video of it. I, I really appreciate how cool it is, my job, you know? So it's, it's uh, yeah, this is true. Flight delay, and today's flight delay is due to <laughs> mechanical ATC weather. I, you know, I had a lot of people, especially when I was flying passengers back in the day, I had a lot of people, when we'd have a delay, would not believe what the gate agents were telling them. Uh, again, gate agents, I don't know how you guys do what you do and put up with the, the venom that passengers will spit at you when there's nothing that is in the control of the airline. There was a time once, I forget where I was flying to, but there was a massive thunderstorm sitting on top of the airport and in front of it, and it was a, a big airport, let's call it Newark, and there was so much backlog traffic, there was no way that we were gonna get in there. And air, the, the gate agent said, hey, we're not gonna be able to get in because there's weather and there's nothing we can do about it, and the airline that I was flying for canceled the flight. And people were screaming at this lady, and I happened to go up there to, I don't know, get some paperwork because now we were gonna uh, reposition the plane and fly it empty to another city so it was in position to go the next day and this lady was screaming at the gate agent and and I said hey you know and this is one of those weird times where as a pilot people will listen to you and trust you and I really think it's important you as a pilot take care of your flight attendants whenever possible and your gate agents and in this scenario I, I walked up to her and I said ma'am Look, there's weather over the field, and I pulled up my phone, and I showed her the radar that had the weather over the field, and I said, there's no way we're going to get in there right now, and the, the amount of flights that are coming in are already in route, maybe from overseas, they have to go in and land, so the flight's going to get canceled, there's nothing that this woman can do to fix your problem. And she's like, let me see that radar, and I showed it to her, and she goes, well, I have a job interview, and if I don't get to that job interview, I'm not going to get the job. And I said, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, there's nothing we can do for you right now. I'm sorry. She goes, will you take a photo with me with that? And I was like, what? She's like, if I have that, I can send it to my employer and show them that the pilot wouldn't let us get on the flight. I was like, okay, sure. So I'm like, I hold up the phone, and she takes a photo of me holding the phone with the weather radar to show her company that she wasn't going to make it. Speaking of delays, if you've ever wondered how pilots make up time when we're running behind schedule, I'm going to put a video here that explains how we make up time in flight. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.